In this video, not only are we looking at Windows versus Linux gaming performance, we're actually looking at two versions of Windows versus two versions of Linux. Now, Windows 11 Pro or Home, it's the default for most PC gamers. Everything runs, but it's bloated and constantly phoning home. Background processes and forced updates can eat into system resources, and for some, that's a deal breaker. Now, an alternative is Windows 11 LTSC, which is a stripped down version designed for industry use. No Microsoft Store, Xbox services, no feature updates for a decade. It's lean, stable, and ideal for gamers who want fewer interruptions and lower overhead. Though some newer features like direct storage may not work. Now, Arch Linux with op OpenBox is as minimal as it gets. There's no bloat, no fluff, just a lightweight system that gives you complete control. It's perfect for squeezing out every last frame, but it does take effort to set up. Now, Bazite, on the other hand, on you know, it's got a Steam Deck version. It's also got a desktop version, and that, I think, hits the sweet spot for Linux gaming. It is performance-focused, it's console-like, and it's fully tweaked for gaming out of the box. There's no telemetry, no nagging updates, just a clean and customizable experience. But the question is, will the data back it up? Can minimal setups like Arch and LTSC outperform their mainstream counterparts? Let's find out. We're going to take a look at five different games. And we're looking at, you know, a high refresh gameplay in Counter-Strike 2. We're looking at a couple of recent releases on PC which have proven to be problematic in terms of their performance, specifically Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion Remastered and The Last of Us Part Two. Then we're going to look at one that's a few years old now, but it's uh, better optimised. It's Cyberpunk 2077 and a recent enough uh, release in Ghost of Tsushima, which should be relatively straightforward to get 60 plus FPS gaming for the majority of, uh, of game players. And a little bit more about the actual installs, okay? Because, um, you know, what about kernel versions, driver versions, etc.? Well, the system itself is, I would, I would classify it as an entry-level system. And I think it's one that's probably more like the average PC that's out there. If you look at the Steam hardware survey, it's a PC like this that, that most people are, are running. We've got an AMD RX 6650 XT, which is a, an 8 gigabyte graphics card. We have an entry level Ryzen 5 5600 CPU. We're using a, a, you know, a decent quality B550 AM4 motherboard. We're using 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 CL16 memory. And we're using Gen 4 SSDs, which have a, a high uh, read speed. Okay, now on the standard Windows 11 Pro, where, you know, all the updates are, are there, 24H2, we're using the latest, well, 25.5.1 has just come out, but up until then, the Adrenaline Optional Driver 25.4.1 was what was recommended, and, and that had updates for Oblivion Remastered. And it's the same on Windows 11 Enterprise LTSC which has the same updates and the same AMD driver. Now on the Linux side, we've got the, the Bazite and uh, the kernel version there is 6.14.4 and we're looking at Mesa 25.0.5. So the very latest stable 25.0 branch of the Mesa driver, which covers the, the AMD CPU and GPU. And on the Arch Linux side, um, just a very minor update, 6.14.5 is the kernel, and the exact same, 25.0.5 Mesa drivers. Now, if you look at some other data here, if you look at here, we've got, uh, immediately after booting into these operating systems, you'll see the base VRAM usage before you start anything like Steam or Dropbox or any other sort of background services. So on, on a standard Windows 11 Pro or home PC, the best you could probably hope for is 300, 300, 400 megabytes, okay? So you have to do a little bit of deep loading, but not, not anything extravagant. You can still have Xbox Game Bar installed and so on. Um, now, a lot of people, when they boot up Windows 11, they could be using a gigabyte of VRAM, and they could have a lot of background services running, eating up their VRAM, and that, that can be a problem when you've got a, a 6 or 8 gigabyte VRAM buffer, so so it's something for people to be aware of. 
Um, on the LTSC side, a little bit less VRAM usage in the 200s. If we look at Bazite, it's around 400. And with Arch Linux, with very little install, it's just over 200 megabytes. So all in all, all four of them are actually quite low in their VRAM usage. But you can see LTSC and Arch, um, they're using just a little bit less. And uh, you can see in terms of uh, RAM usage as well, it's, it's quite a lot less as well because they're, they're really stripped back. Now, when you do install Arch and this thing called Openbox, which is, isn't even really a full desktop, it basically just gives you the, the ability to draw, to draw windows, you know, like a, like a terminal, for example. It, it will allow you to install Firefox and get it running, but it doesn't have all of the, the other bells and whistles that you expect from a modern desktop environment like KDE or GNOME or, or Windows, obviously. Whereas Bazite does give you all those bells and whistles. It's a nice clean environment, it, but it does pre-install things like Steam, Lutris, the Her Heroic Game Launcher, all of things which you would have to install separately on Arch. So that's one of the advantages of Bazite. And it does so while still maintaining performance and not having any real amount of backroom processes that, that should interrupt your gaming performance. I'll come to the charts at the end when I've reviewed all the performance, but for now, let's get into the videos. So we'll begin with Cyberpunk 2077. Now I won't show side-by-side top-to-bottom footage the entire way. I will show side-by-side -side like this, Win 11 Pro versus Bazite, where Bazite has a decent 4 to 6% better performance. But when it comes to the slimline versions, we've got LTSC versus Arch. Again, a little bit of a 3 to 4% advantage for Linux there with Arch. And which is the better Linux in terms of performance? Well, actually, funny enough, Bazite has a slightly better performance here, but there's little to choose between them. And on the Windows side, again, not much to choose between them, though Win 11 Pro just has a tiny advantage on the overall average FPS. Now, pausing for the overall percentages we see across the board, not a lot in it, just a very slight advantage for Linux, in, in particular Bazite. So let's move on to the next game, and we have Counter-Strike 2, Win11 Pro versus Bazite. As you'd expect, Windows versus Linux, Counter-Strike 2 does have a bit of an advantage. And we see it's similar with uh, LTSC versus Arch. The difference tends to be around 8 to 10 percent, Windows versus Linux. Now, when it comes to the two Linux versions, again, nothing between them, margin of error stuff. And similarly, with a Win 11 Pro versus LTSC, again, margin of error, there's nothing really between them. Uh, a good experience all around, no matter what your operating system. So, there's no point in dwelling too much here. With the next game, Oblivion Remastered, you can see on the left, very, very stuttery, Win 11 Pro versus Bazite. So, Windows a little bit faster, and I'm going to pause here because you may have noticed the 1% lows here on LTSC version of Windows. No explanation for it. I've restarted the system, restarted the game multiple times. Every time I run, you know, I do at least four runs per benchmark. Okay, so LTSC in this game, at least four runs at these settings. And for each one of them, I would have restarted the game fully. I've even tried rebooting the PC. Didn't make a difference, sometimes in the teens, sometimes in the 30s, but overall average 25% on the 1% lows. Why is that? I'm not sure. Could it be something like direct storage or some other missing DLL that you get on the full version of Windows, the, the pro version, the gaming fo focus version of Windows? I don't know. If you know, let me know down in the comments. Okay, And, uh, you know, uh, this is a good point to ask you to subscribe. Um, if you like what you see so far, if you like all these performance uh, reviews, if you like to see the side-by-side -side footage, if it gives you a good idea about Windows versus Linux performance and helps you make a decision, then please consider subscribing because there's lots more content like this on the channel and to come as well. But moving on, when we look at the next um, operating system, Bazite versus Arch, we have actually... Let's pause it there again okay, and go back a little bit because it's interesting to see here that, and, and this is probably the only game where we see any significant difference between Bazite and Arch and 
It's hard to know why exactly, because on the face of it, they seem to be identical, but Bazite does have a 7 or 8% uh, advantage over Arch, and who knows, maybe a game update, maybe some other update in a couple of weeks' time could change that, and, and suddenly they're the same again, but, you know, like I said, I do restart the game every time uh, for every single benchmark run, and this is the result that came out, and why exactly there's this difference? You know, I can't exactly explain. But we'll move on to look at the Windows versions, and we see, again, those 1% lows for the LTSC version, not very good. And we'll stop here briefly just to reiterate that overall, Windows does have a little bit of an advantage in terms of overall FPS, but in terms of 1% lows, they're all very much similar. In fact, Bazite is uh, the best 1% lows of all. Um, but there is that caveat of the 1% lows on LTC not being very good. And you can see the, the level of stuttering there on the bottom left-hand side. You can see the there, that noisy frame time graph. But let's continue on with the next game, which is The Last of Us Part 2. And we'll see that with 1440p high native settings, we'll see that uh, Bazite was very good, 60 FPS performance, Windows lagging a bit behind, uh, around 10% on the FPS and even more on the 1% uh, the lows. Linux side, virtually identical, Windows side, virtually identical. But if we review the, the overall percentages, we'll see that there's a bit more than 10% of an advantage for Linux in terms of average FPS and slightly even better than that on the 1% lows. So, you know, good result there for, for Linux. If you want that 60 FPS, uh, 1440p experience, it's there. With Windows, you're going to have to employ some upscaling or reduce the resolution or settings a little bit. But moving on to Ghost of Tsushima, the final game, we'll see on Windows 11 Pro versus Bazite, not much in the difference, but again, just like Oblivion Remastered, we see a massive drop-off in the 1% lows for LTSC. And is this because it's a PlayStation port? Is there something missing on the LTSC version that's missing? Uh, that, that would be on Win 11 Pro, something to do with the Xbox Game Bar, something to do with, uh, you know, direct storage maybe. That could be it. But, you know, I, I don't think the, the Linux uh, OSs have... Uh, so direct or direct support for direct storage. I don't think that's there either. So it's very hard to explain. Maybe let me know in the comments if you have any ideas why in particular LTSC might be facing these 1% low issues. But let's move on for now to the Linux versions. Very little in it. Tiny advantage for Bazite that, that you wouldn't really notice. And on the Windows side, it's those 1% lows on LTSC. Um, otherwise, the overall average is the same. And if we look at the overall percentages, we'll see not a lot of difference between any of them except for the 1% lows in LTC. That's the only outlier that we see here. Okay, it's time to move on to the charts and see if there's anything of note here. And the main thing that I would draw attention to, of course, as I said throughout the course of the video, is the 1% lows on the LTC in both Oblivion and Ghost of Tsushima. You see here, very significant drops down in the 1% lows. But otherwise, if you look across the board, apart from Counter-Strike 2, where there's a little bit of an advantage, and in The Last of Us Part 2, where there's a little bit of advantage for Linux, okay, so Windows wins out in Counter-Strike 2, Linux wins out in The Last of Us Part 2, Ghost of Tsushima, very similar across the board, except for the 1% lows on LTSC. Uh, similarly for Cyberpunk, there's hardly a cigarette paper between all of them. Very similar experience across the board. Tiny win for Bazite. Um, but otherwise, it's just those 1% lows. And uh, The Last of Us Part 2 and Counter-Strike 2. Otherwise, you know, if you were gaming on any of these with the exception of those 1% lows on, on LTSC, you, you're not going to really be noticing much of a difference. And really at that point, it just comes down to your personal preference and your philosophy. Do I need to be on Windows? Then, okay, I need to be on Windows. Maybe there's applications I need to use. 
maybe my job needs it. Um, but uh, but otherwise, maybe you're sick and tired of the bloat, the 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 operating system constantly phoning home with telemetry data, um, having privacy issues, all the pop ups and so on. Then you know it's it's probably comforting to look at something like this and see okay, there isn't really a difference. You know the the gaming there might be a percent, a few percent here, a few percent there, but averaging out overall, there's probably no more than you know, small single single digit percentages between a lot of them. So um, I hope you found that useful and in some ways comforting, okay, that whatever you choose, you're not really losing out unless you go after heavy duty ray tracing and, and so on, um, which is something I look at in other videos. But I hope you'll uh, consider subscribing if you want to see more of this content. And I will see you in the next video.